there. I think I told people that the idea for Advent and the Psalms was actually yours. So thank you for that. Sure. <laughs> although, although you created a lot of work for me, let's face it. <laughs> yes. I mean, you um, could create a lot of, actually, uh, it just kind of popped in my head. It, it wasn't, it meant to be a lot of work. It actually was something that I was very curious about how Advent kind of unfolds through the Psalms. And, and uh, because of that curiosity is, I think that's where I, the idea came from. Well, you definitely lit a fire under me, and it's it's been very exciting. And uh, this particular day, day twenty three, uh, which is titled "Childless," and it's about uh, poor Elizabeth uh, who uh, had no children. Yeah, it's a it's a, actually Elizabeth and Zachariah. They are um, an older couple, which can be anywhere from age sixty on up. Um, I kind of imagined an eight, somebody in their eighties and. Um, uh, Crazy and I, yeah, and I was picturing my, you know, my mom who just became a great grandmother last year. And I was thinking about Elizabeth having shriveled up fallopian tubes and how God, um, it, you know, unshriveled them. Yes, he he eventually brought life into her womb in a great way. But um, I'm getting ahead of myself because it's just an old couple that has no kids at this point. Right. It ends with that. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. What did, and, it, mean, what did it mean for a, a woman in that culture to uh, to be childless? Well, it was a, a thing of shame. It was very common um, to be thought of somebody that had sin in their lives and that because of that sin, um, God would have prevented them from having children. So here you have two people, both from the lineage of Aaron, which is the priestly lineage. They are, that means that they don't have an inheritance. That means that children, they don't have any children to, um, to take care, care them. for them. Yeah, to take care of them. That's like that Abrahamic blessing is supposed to not only include land, but offspring. And so for some reason, they're left out of it. He chose this couple to uh, bear the child that would be the um, forerunner, uh, the cousin to Jesus, the one that will um, baptize him. Yeah. And I how, what think, incredible uh, legacy is that? Yeah, I get this image of uh, Luke interviewing uh, an old, old woman now, Mary, uh, because he, he probably interviewed her in her six, 70s or so. And, she, and he's saying, tell me about the birth of Jesus. And she probably says, no, 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 wait first. I have to tell you about Elizabeth. And, yeah. and let's start it there. And so Luke, I see Luke saying, okay, let's start it there. She's, she's a person who's dealing with uh, the shame of childlessness. And um, here we, we've picked something from Handel that also talks about uh, uh, Jesus being scorned and shamed. Yeah, so Handel's Messiah is actually written, uh, is divided into three parts. The first part deals with Christmas, and part two deals with the passion of Jesus, or uh, the cross. Uh, and so this particular movement that you picked was actually uh, found in Psalm 69. And let me just read it to you. It's 69, 19 through 20. You know how I am scorned, disgraced, and shamed. All my enemies are before you. Scorn has broken my heart and has left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I found none. See, I can just imagine Elizabeth um, being a person that is scorned or disgraced or maybe possibly just passed over. Yeah. Um, and she probably most likely because she was a devout woman had continued to uh, offer these prayers and, and she felt like they these prayers for children fell on deaf ears yeah. and there's this there's this um picture of waiting on god and and maybe even at this point at, at not thinking that god would really answer i, I would think that the idea that God uh, would choose her was was way past her thoughts by then. 
Right. And, and she was in the ranks of other women um, in the Bible that we see that had miracle babies. The, the thing is, is that in our waiting, God will um, answer and God does, we can trust him and we can wait on, on the Lord. Uh, so in Psalms 27, it's beautiful and it ends, um, you know, waiting for, it's this wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And Elizabeth and Zachariah waited many, many years to see the Lord's um, answer. And it was a much grander thing than it would have been had they had had children in their 20s. Yeah, right away. Yeah, it's amazing that uh, God removing the shame of the entire world starts with him picking one couple and removing their shame. Pretty cool stuff. Wait on the Lord and the kingdom of God will come and be with you and um, ask him for those big things, ask him for the big dreams and the promises. You know, nothing is beyond God and we can totally ask him for big things. Mm -hmm.